titration can be thought of as a battle. In this case, we'll imagine that there is a castle being defended by acid molecules. The castle is flying a white flag. This will represent the color of the phenol thaline. As long as at least one acid still stands, this flag will be white. The base molecules are the attackers. They will be added one at a time in your titration. That will mean drop by drop. Their goal is to wipe out the acid defenders and then raise a pink flag on the castle. The key to titration is this statement here. One base kills one acid. So if there are one, two, three defenders, acid molecules are the defenders, it will require one, two, three molecules of base to wipe out those defenders. When the castle is defenseless, when the last acid soldier has fallen, this flag will be changed to pink to represent the victory of the bases. The initial part of the titration lab requires you to make a solution of a weak acid in a beaker. So here's my weak acid. I weighed out the right amount, 5.00 millimoles of KHP, potassium hydrogen phthalate. Put it in the beaker. I'm supposed to dissolve it in 50 milliliters of water. The exact volume of water isn't that important, but it is important I use distilled water. Distilled water, as you know, has no additional acids or bases in it. So I've been stirring it for a while, it's all dissolved now. I need to add one or two drops of phenolphthalein. This is the molecule that can turn pink when it is deprotonated. So one, two drops. I'm not expecting any color change here because I don't have any bases in the beaker, only acids. I'm now removing the beaker, setting it aside. The next step is to set up a burette. So a burette is a very long tube with a valve at the bottom and it's got markings on the barrel of the tube that tell me precise volumes, very precise volumes. The burette goes into the special clamp here. I am opening the clamp. I am placing the burette in here. I'm releasing the clamp. So it's spring-loaded. I need to be able to read the numbers clearly. So I can read these numbers very clearly. That's how I'm going to set up my burette. I'm now going to load the burette with some base. So you're going to have a solution, either solution X, Y, or Z. It's sodium hydroxide, so it's a strong base solution, but you won't know the concentration. I made them all different. To fill the burette is tricky. One of the precautions I ask you to take is that at the bottom, you want to put a waste beaker. Not your precious beaker with the acid solution, just a garbage beaker in case you spill. It's very common that you spill. So there's my waste beaker. Also, be very careful. The tip of the burette is very easy to break. It's very thin, very fragile. Burette is 50 bucks, so don't break it. So here I'm using a funnel, and I'm going to add my base to the burette. So if I pour indiscriminately, if I pour too fast, I'm going to get it to fill up the burette and then spill over the top. That's why I put the garbage beaker down below to catch that excess if I do that. I want to fill the burette fairly full, near the top, near the top of the lines. The lines stop right here. Okay, so that's close enough to the top. Remove my funnel. And let's take a look. Many students have trouble reading a burette because the numbers are backwards from what they expect. Zero is at the top. One, two, three, four, five. You do not need to know how much solution is in the burette. You only care how much comes out of the burette. So I read this as 5.4 milliliters. That's where we are right now. Bottom of the curve is at 5.4 milliliters. I will now allow 
the solution to drop out. You can see the water level dropping. I've stopped it at 8.8 .8 milliliters. 5.4 to 8.8. 3.4 milliliters have come out of the burette. I never care what's in the burette, only what's come out. The actual act of titrating works this way. My acid is here with the phenolphthalein. My base is in the burette. I can open the valve. I can add the base slowly or quickly. In the beginning of the titration, it's okay to go pretty quickly. What I'm looking for is the amount of base it takes to turn this solution pink. It's got to stay pink. You may, if you had a shot, you may see a flash of pink, but it doesn't stay. You need to add the base slowly when you get close to the end. I'm very close to the end of the titration. You see each drop of base that goes in makes a flash of pink, goes away after a second, but there's going to be one drop that makes it stay pink. I'm trying to turn it off at that particular drop. Yes, and this is it. And maybe I want to add one drop more. One drop more, let's see. Oop. I added two drops, and you can see I went too far. I've added a little bit too much base. I didn't have enough skill there with turning it off after one drop. Uh, but you can see it's pink. It's permanently pink. I have neutralized all the acid molecules. I have reacted them all with base. I now need to read the volume. How much base did I use? So I go back up to my burette and I read the volume. Right there is where it's at. I read the volume. At the end of the hour when you're done with all your titrations, your pink solution should go down the drain. The material left in your burette should be drained into a waste beaker. Leave an empty burette for the next class, please.